this is wicked. They grew up so fast. And I can't even believe I'm going to cook this. It's going to be amazing now. So grab your towels. Unlock your jaw. And get ready for this amazing chopped steak sandwich. This episode is brought to you by Wicked Kitchen. Made for adults, but good enough for kids. And these three new mac and cheese flavors, Smoky Picnic, Barbecue King, and this is Nacho Mac and Cheese. You can make them any way you like. Just launched to Kroger and on Amazon in the U.S. I am addicted to growing mushrooms. And if you're new to this channel, you know that I cook a lot of mushrooms and turn them into amazing meaty steaks or any kind of incredible dish I used to enjoy when I ate animals. I just turned them vegan by using mushrooms. And these mushroom kits are from Marvelous Mushroom. While I'm in the UK, I tend to get about two or three of these now a month. And I just have them going all the time. Super cool to watch. It's a quick spray with a water bottle once a day. I have a mushrooms in two weeks, two growth cycles, and you end up with these amazing dishes. It's incredible. Super sustainable and fun for the whole family. So check online where you can get grow kits yourself in whatever country or state you're in. Or check your farmer's markets. Look up local growers. I mean, these guys are amazing. And this one, particularly beautiful. I'm still going to cook it though, because I know it's going to taste amazing. So if you're a chef, this is the place for you. These, in, an, in a restaurant setting, on a menu, would be off the charts. Amazing. For a vegan option, plant-based option, or just any option. I mean, if you're a foodie and you love food, how can you not like this? We're going to be prepping this, pressing it, the sarno sear they call it. I'm going to be pressing it between two cast iron pans. And I like to get the pans nice and hot, add the mushroom right to it, slowly let it get used to the pan, used to the heat, pressing it with another cast iron pan or whatever you have that's clean on the bottom that you can press it with. So I want to make sure we're getting some of the water out because it's so much like a sponge. They retain so much water. I'm going to get some of the water right out by pressing it. A little bit of oil to sear it on there. I want that nice browning for that flavor and it just looks amazing. If you're more the healthy side, whole foods plant-based, no oil, we have those videos too. I have verses showing the differences between using oil and not oil uh, on the Mushroom Masterclass playlist on our channel. Just have a look over there. And this is probably going to take me five or six minutes. I'm, I'm leaving it a little bit extra longer here just so you can see the process. I do set off my fire alarm once in a while, so if you're wondering, that does happen. But you know, hey, it comes with the territory. So here, just check it out in the pan. You can see the water that's come out, but the nice, you gotta get the browning on it before it starts to exude water. That's one of the key things. But once you get it to this point now, if you're in a restaurant, you can pull it off and marinate it here, which is perfect. And then you could use it the next day. I mean, you guys, once I open a restaurant, these are gonna be on it and it's gonna be amazing. So you're just going to want to sear both sides and then take them off the heat. And these are perfect. And I can't say enough good things about using cast iron. I've probably used cast iron now for the last 10 to 12 years. Just, it's my go-to. Every single time I cook with it, I just run it under cold water, or just run it under the faucet water, wipe it out quick, reapply a nice little thin layer of oil to re-season the pan. And we're good to go for next time. It is one of the easiest cleanups out there. While we let the steak cool, we're gonna julienne one red onion and start getting our mise en place together. So for the onion, after you julienne it, I do like to break it apart with my hands where they crush it and just put it on the plate in the side. And then we're gonna get on with a couple cloves of garlic with a quick chop on those. You don't have to mince it, slice it, whatever you wanna do. It's all going to be cooked perfect. It's just how much garlic you want in your mouth. When I was younger, I had a chef always tell me, nobody wants big pieces of garlic in their food. Well, I tended to disagree with that. So I cut them in slivers, sometimes slices, sometimes mince. It's all what you prefer. I'm also going to add a shallot here. I bought a huge bag of shallots. So for all you guys telling me not to combine shallots with onion and garlic, well, too bad. Here we go. 
I'm gonna be using it up. I'm not wasting food. And it all tastes good. I like hitting every taste bud with all the flavors and it's all about building flavors, especially with plant-based food because so many people think it doesn't taste good. It's just not flavorful enough. And that's not the case with Wicked. It's not the case how I cook. It's not the case how Wicked Kitchen makes food. It's all flavor first. And we're just gonna use a sprig of thyme I got out from the garden. And it probably will equal a teaspoon of fresh chopped thyme. And we're gonna dice one tomato, slice in half, slice again, do the quick dice, and that's it. I thought I would use two, but one is gonna be plenty for this one. And one jalapeno, this is optional. I like mine a little bit spicy, and I think jalapenos have an amazing flavor. And this one, after tasting it, is about medium spice, it's not too hot. They all seem to vary for some reason, so I always tend to try one. For the bread, I grabbed a nice fresh baguette from in town. I walked earlier after walking Frankie, and this is gonna be perfect. So just quick slice up down the middle. I'm gonna butter it. You don't have to butter it, but I'm gonna butter it because that's the way we did it in the restaurant. For that extra, extra. Lastly, the steaks are cooled down enough. Now we're just gonna do a quick slice on these, and it looks gorgeous. Now, you could make this into anything you want. I could just have this with steak and potatoes, steak and veg. I could just pop this between two pieces of bread. I mean, it's, it's great. To me, this is like a piece of meat, except without the animal. So it tastes delicious. Now I only seasoned it with salt and pepper. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna heat the, another cast iron pan up, start really making it like chopped steak sandwich. I had an onions first, then the chopped steak, the mushroom steak, and then the barbecue seasoning. Use whatever kind of barbecue seasoning you like or barbecue rub. I just happened to have some leftover Wiki Kitchen barbecue seasoning that we had sold. And yeah, this is looking amazing. Just want to get that pan ripping hot, cook it well, get all the caramelization on there. Oh man. My mouth is water and watching this again and this sandwich is absolutely banging. I'm dressing mine with a little bit of vegan mayonnaise, some Dijon mustard, and then we have the Wiki Kitchen smoked Gouda cheese slices right on here. Pop the mushrooms in the oven quick, just to crisp up a little bit more while I prep this bread and get it ready for finishing. Once the mushrooms are done, just gonna pop it on the bread. Pop that back in the oven to give it a toast. Clean up the pan, clean up around me. I've got to have everything clean before I sit and eat. Top it with some fresh lettuce. And then I'm gonna wrap it up in the parchment paper just so I can cut it and hold it. It's a lot easier that way. And then we're digging in. Take a couple photographs. This looks fantastic. And I gotta tell you, it was freaking amazing. I saved the other half, gave it to a friend of mine. I ate this over the course of the next hour and a half. It's delicious. And poor Frankie. Love Franks. All right, guys. Thank you very much. See you soon.